Hello guys! Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So for today's video, kukontinue natin yung discussion natin about process costing. So part 4 na po tayo. So in this video, magkufocus naman tayo what if ang manufacturing firm on its second month of operation or kaya naman second year of operation. If that's the case, doon na po yung papasok yung konsepto ng accounting method natin na FIFO method and average method. So let's start. Okay guys, so before we proceed sa process costing ng FIFO method at average method, I think it's a better idea na pag-usapan muna natin or i-review muna natin yung FIFO method and average method under merchandise accounting. Kasi same concept lang naman sila, ang pinagkaibahan lang sa process costing under manufacturing cost is dumami na yung ating mga variables. So meron na tayong maraming department at the same time, hindi lang purchases yung kailangan nating i-account, kundi meron na rin tayong mga conversion costs such as the direct labor and the factory overhead. So kailangan muna natin masolidify yung concept ng FIPO method and average method sa merchandise accounting bago natin maintindihan yung konsepto naman dun sa ating process costing. So, i-review muna natin. So, as we all know sa merchandise accounting, so meron tayong FIPO and we also have the average method. So, pag sinabi natin FIPO method, so first in, first out. So, meaning kung ano yung una nating binili, siya yung una nating ibibenta. So, kapag meron tayong beginning inventory, ayun muna yung una nating ilalabas bago natin ilabas yung ating mga succeeding purchases. So, sa average method naman, so there's no distinction between beginning inventory at yung mga current purchases natin kasi pag natin sila, then at the end of the day, we are required to compute for the unit cost. So, uh, gawa tayo ng example para ma-recall natin kung paano kinocompute ang FIFO method at ang average method. So, sa merchandise inventory, ang pinaka-goal talaga natin uh, under FIFO method and average method is actually the computation of the uh, ending inventory and the computation of the cost of goods sold. Kasi ito yung magde-determine kung magkano ilalagay natin dito sa mga account na to. So, let's have an example. So, let's say for example, we have three, uh, actually four transactions. So, meron tayong beginning balance dyan. Ang units na nun ay 100. Ang unit cost, we have 55. So, ang total cost nun ay 5,500. And we also have the first purchases, which is 400 units. Then, ang cost natin ay 50. So, ang total cost nun ay 20,000 pesos. Then, we also have the second purchase, which is 300 units. Then, ang unit cost nun ay 57. So, ang total cost nun ay 17,100. So, during the month daw, nagkaroon daw tayo ng sales na 300 units. So, ang ating option is to compute the ending inventory and cost of goods sold for both FIFO method and average method. So, again, ang ulitin ko lang po, sa average method, we are required to compute for the average unit cost, while sa FIFO method, uh, hindi na tayo required kasi dapat intact ang unit cost ng ating uh, beginning inventory kasi at the end of the day, una nating ilalabas yung beginning inventory. So, let's start dun tayo sa FIFO method. So, sa FIFO method, meron kayong two ways on how to compute for the ending inventory and the cost of goods sold. Depende kung sino yung gusto nyong inahin ni compute. Kasi alam naman natin, ang computation natin ay total goods available for sale minus ending inventory equals cost of goods sold. So, ang kapag kinumpute mong una ay cost of goods sold, so, ililess mo lang yun dun sa ating total goods available for sale in order to compute for the ending inventory. So, on the other hand, kapag ang inunaw natin kinumpute ay ending inventory, so, yung lalabas na ending inventory mo, ililess mo lang yun from the uh, total goods available for sale in order to compute for the cost of goods sold. In my case, mas gusto kong kuhaan ninyong ending inventory, uh, then inililess ko na lang siya sa total goods available for sale. So, gawin po yung gawin po natin. So, ang crucial po niyan is to determine natin how, mi how many units are left in the production or how many units are left in the business and how many units are sold dun sa ating customer. So, malalaman natin yan sa gamit ang ulit tayo ng T-account, di ba? So, sabi dito, ang beginning balance natin ay 100 units. Then, nagkaroon tayo ng dalawang purchases, 400, 300. So, basically, ang ating purchases in units, we have 700. So, ang total goods available per sale in units natin is 800 units. So, lagay lang natin dito sa kabila. So, out of 800, 300 daw yung nabenta. So, meron tayong sales dyan na 300. Then, yung ending in units natin, we have 500. Kasi, 800 minus 300... So, ang lalabas doon ay 500 units. 
So ngayon, kuhanin natin yung value ng 500 units, di ba? So sabi ko nga, kapag kinumpute natin yung ending inventory, yung lalabas na result doon, ililess mo lang doon sa total goods available per sale para makuha naman natin yung cost of goods sold. So, uh, compute muna natin pala yung total goods available per sale para nakaredy na. So, to get the total goods available per sale, i-add lang po natin lahat yan. So, kuhain ko lang yung calculator. So, meron tayo dyang 5,500 plus 20,000 plus 17,100. So, ang total natin ay 42,600. So, ang tawag po natin dito ay total goods available per sale. So, meron tayo dyang 42,600. So, kumpitin lang natin yung ending inventory. So, ang gagamitin po natin ay yung 500. So, dahil 5 po method to uh, para makuha yung ending inventory. So, ito po yung mga last purchases po natin. Kasi nga, yung mga first purchases at yung beginning, part na yun ng cost of goods sold. So, therefore, yung ending inventory, ito po yung mga last purchases. So, mag-start tayo dun sa last purchase which is nangyari ng second purchase. So, nag-purchase daw doon ng 300 units. Kuhain lang natin yung unit cost noon which is 57. So, magkano po yun? So, 57 times 300. So, ang lalabas doon ay 17,100. However, meron pa tayo natitira na 200 na kailangan i-account kasi yung last purchase 300 units lang. So, 200 units times uh, yung cost noon is 50. So, times 50 mo lang. So, ang lalabas na result doon ay 200 times 50. So, meron tayong 10,000. So, kuhain mo lang yung total. So, 17,100 plus 10,000. So, ito na, this represents the amount of your ending inventory. Ayan, 17,100. So, ito yung ating ending inventory. So, iles mo lang ulit. 42,600 minus 27,100. So, yung lalabas na result dyan, that will form part of your cost of goods sold. So, ito po ang ating COGS. So, this represents yung COGS natin na 300 units. Okay? So, ganyan lang po yung computation sa FIFO method. So, proceed naman tayo dun sa average method. So, sa average method, as I mentioned earlier, pagsasamahin natin yung beginning and yung ating current purchases. So, in our case, so ang computation po ng unit cost will be tigas peso over tigas units. Yan. So, ang total tigas in peso natin is 42,600. Then, yung ating total tigas in units, we have 800, which is na-commit natin dun sa kabila. So, therefore, ang ating unit cost or average unit cost will be 42,600 over 800. So, meron po tayong 53.25. So, yung 53.25, ito na po yung gagamitin nating unit cost para malaman po natin kung magkano yung ilalagay natin sa cost of goods sold at yung ending inventory. So, ang kailangan po natin i-account is yung 800 units, ba diba? So, sabi doon sa problem, yung 300 daw naging part ng ending inventory. Tapos yung 500 naging part ng cost of goods sold ay baliktad pala, sorry. So, yung 300, ito yung ating cost of goods sold. Tapos, yung 500, this represents your ending inventory. Yan. So, ang gagawin lang po natin, dahil meron na tayong unit cost, i-multiply lang natin. So, 53.25, then 53.25. So, for the 500, ang magiging amount po natin dyan ay 500 units times 53.25 that would be 26,625. Okay? Then, for the cost of goods sold, we have 53.25 times 300. Ang lalabas doon ay 15,975. So, pag tinotal natin yung ating cost of goods sold at yung ending inventory, dapat ang magiging result natin dyan ay 42,000. 600. So, 26,625 plus 15,975 which is equivalent to 42,600. So, ganyan lang po yung pag-compute ng cost of goods sold at ending inventory under merchandise accounting. 
So, ang kailangan nyo lang pong tandaan dito kung ano po yung pinagkaiba nilang dalawa. So, yung una nilang pinagkaiba under unit cost, we are required to, ay under average method, we are required to compute for the unit cost kasi nga pinagsasama natin yung beginning inventory tsaka yung current purchases. While sa varied po method, we are no longer required to compute for the unit cost kasi dapat yung unit cost ng beginning inventory ay intact just because the beginning inventory will automatically be part of our cost of goods sold. Diba? So, at the same time, yung beginning inventory po. Sa average method, the beginning inventory is uh, accounted for. Diba? So, ibig sabihin, kasama po yung beginning inventory sa pag-compute ng ating unit cost. While dun sa FIFA method, yung beginning inventory is ignored. Ignored yan kasi ulitin ko lang, dap, kasi part na automatic ng cost of goods sold. So, for the purpose of computing the ending inventory, hindi na po natin yan sinasama. So, again, under FIPO method, ang beginning inventory ay ini-ignore na natin. While sa average method, sinasama natin yan sa computation kasi pinagahalo po natin yung mga cost ng beginning inventory at the same time yung current purchases. So, same concept applies dun sa ating process costing. Tandaan, ang pinagkaiba po nila talagang major difference is the treatment of the beginning inventory. Sa FIPO method, ini-ignore na po natin ang beginning inventory, while sa average method ay sinasama po natin yan sa computation ng unit cost. Okay, so let's now proceed with process costing. Remember, same concept applies, ba? Diba? So, magkakaroon lang tayo ng mga consideration kasi dunadagdagan na po yung ating variables such as the existence of a lot of departments. So, dahil nagkakaroon ng transfer from one department to another, so that scenario must be considered in process costing. At the same time, uh, due to the existence of the conversion cost, so regardless kung piliin man natin FIPO method or average method, we are now required to compute for the unit cost. Kasi sa merchandise accounting, hindi tayo nagko-compute ng unit cost kasi intact naman na yung unit cost ng ating uh, beginning inventory at purchases under FIPO method. Unlike sa process costing, dahil nadadagdagan pa yung ating cost, aside from the purchases will be, which will become part of our direct materials, nagkakaroon pa tayo ng another cost na conversion cost such as the direct labor and the factory overhead. So because of that, we need to compute for the new unit cost na para naman ma-determine natin yung transferred out at yung ending inventory. So regardless kung piliin nyo po yung FIPO method or yung ating average method, we are now required to compute for the unit cost. Kasi alam naman natin ang unit cost vital to sa process costing kasi this will determine the value of the ending inventory and the value of the uh, cost of goods manufactured or yung tinatawag po natin na transferred out. So however, ang unit cost nakadepende po yan sa computation ng equivalent unit of production. So, alam naman natin, as I mentioned earlier, one of the major difference ng FIPO method tsaka ng average method is the treatment of the beginning inventory. Kasi sa FIPO method, we disregard the value of the beginning inventory kasi alam naman natin, this will form part ng ating transferred out automatically. Kaya nga siya tinawag na first in, first out. Yung bago tayo, yung itatransfer natin sa next department, dapat unahin muna natin itransfer yung beginning inventory. So, ibig sabihin sa FIFO, hindi na natin, hindi natin pwedeng ihalo ang unit cost ng beginning inventory sa ating current cost. Kasi magugulo po ang ating unit cost. That's why sa FIFO method, we ignore the beginning inventory. So, sa average method naman, uh, same concept lang sa merchandise accounting, we're in yung beginning inventory ko natin, ina-add natin dun sa ating current purchases. Since we are dealing with uh, process costing, so hindi na po current purchases ang gagamitin nating term. Ang gagamitin na po nating term is yung manufacturing cost. So, ito po yung ating pro forma entry to get the unit cost under average method. So, sa taas, we have the, begin, um, the manufacturing cost current yung na-incur po natin during the month, then i-add nyo po yung beginning inventory cost natin na na-incur natin last month na hindi pa natin natatransfer dun sa next department. So, yung ating magiging uh, denominator naman will be the EUP. However, yung EUP, it is the combination of the uh, equivalent unit production of the beginning inventory plus the equivalent unit of production of the current period. Okay. So, for FIFO method, as I mentioned earlier, we disregard the value of the beginning inventory kasi this will already form part of our finished goods once we deliver the cost from one department to another. 
So, tatanggalin nyo lang po yung beginning inventory. So, sa FIFO method, this will be our computation. So, manufacturing cost current over EUP current. So, ayan po yung ating pinaka pro form, uh, formula in order to get the unit cost na gagamitin naman natin later on para ma-determine yung value ng ending inventory at yung value ng ating transferred out. Okay, so let's have an example. So, let's say for example in a manufacturing firm, so meron daw tayong beginning inventory, 1,000 units. Then according to the percentage of completion, it is 30% completed before the start of the current period. So basically, yung 30% nagawa yan nung prior period. Then nung current period, ang nagawa po natin ay 70%. Then we also have a started in process, 5,000 units. So mga bagong pasok ito. Then uh, after the production period, nagkaroon daw tayo ng ending inventory na 2,000 units. However, these units are partially completed, 50% completed. So, dumalabas yung ating magiging transferred out in units will be 4,000 kasi 1,000 yung beginning, yung started in process natin 5,000, less natin yung ending na 2,000. So, yung transferred out in units natin will be 4,000. So, aside from this, uh, ito daw yung mga cost na na-incurred natin. So, meron daw tayo dyang beginning inventory cost which is yung 30% completed. Ang amount nun ay 15,000 pesos. Then, we also have manufacturing cost 258,500. Ang total cost nun ay 273,500. So, ito po ang ating mga requirements. So, we need to compute for the equivalent unit of production, unit cost, ending inventory balance, and transferred out on each of the following costing method. So, gagawan po natin ang sariling computation, si FIPO method, at gagawan din po natin ang sariling computation, si average method. Okay? So, as I mentioned earlier, lagi nyo lang tatandaan ang pinagkaiba ni FIFO method is yung average method is the treatment of the beginning inventory. Kasi, sa FIFO method, tinedisregard po natin ang yan. So, sa FIFO method, tinedisregard po natin ang beginning. So, hindi natin yung sasama. Sa average method, sinasama po natin ang beginning. So, ito po yung ating magiging guide. Diba? So, pwede nyo nang itaas. FIFO, tanggalin ang beginning. So, yung average, sinasama ang beginning. So, punta muna tayo doon sa FIFO method. So, sa FIFO method, uh, para makuha natin ang equivalent unit of production, so, babalikan lang natin yung ating T-account na pin-repair natin last time. So, same lang yung approach po natin. So, under sa T-account natin, diba? So, meron tayo ditong sa left side, we have the beginning inventory. Ang value nun, ang units nun is 1,000. Then we have the transferred in units. So, meron tayo ditong 5,000. So, itong uh, 6,000 na yan. So, pag tinutal natin yan, 6,000. So, ang tawag po natin dyan sa process costing is quantity to be accounted for. So, yung sa right, right side naman, ang tatawagin na mo naman natin to na quantity accounted for. So, syempre, ipo-forward mo lang. So, 6,000. So, yung quantity accounted for, this will be the basis of the equivalent unit of production. So, based dun sa information, yung ending balance natin ng, ng units natin is 2,000. So, malamang yung transferred out natin ay 4,000. So, ibig sabihin, ito po yung kailangan po natin i-account to get the equivalent unit of production. Kasi nga, ang kailangan po natin compute is yung equivalent unit of production produced during the month. So, under FIPO, dinidisregard po natin si beginning. So, pwede na po tayo mag-start. So, uh, sa FIPO method, ito po yung uh, formula or yung computation or yung guide bago natin makompute yung equivalent unit of production. So, meron tayo yung transferred out and we also have the ending inventory. So, dahil FIPO method yan, so yung transferred out, dalawa po yung composition yan, di ba? Yung isa nang galing sa beginning, yung isa naman nang galing dun sa ating started and completed. So, pag sinabi natin beginning, yung units na to, nanggaling pa yan last period, so, tinuloy lang natin yung production during the period. Yung started and completed naman, so, kakagawa lang natin this period, then natapos din siya right away. Okay? So, yung beginning na yan, meron po tayong dalawang composition dyan. Yung isa, yung natapos ng prior period, tapos yung isa natapos in this period. So, uh, sa case natin, ito po yung 30%. Tapos, uh, yung natapos naman during the period, ito po yung 70%. Okay? So, ayan po yung magiging guide po natin. Tapos, yung ending inventory, multiply lang natin yan sa rate of completion. So, start tayo. So, ang ating transferred out uh, in units is 
4,000. So, out of 4,000, nanggaling yung 1,000 sa beginning. Then, yung remaining, so, of course, it is considered that started and completed during the month. So, lagay lang po natin dito ay 3,000 units. However, yung 1,000 units, sabi ko nga sa inyo, hindi naman yan lahat nagawa during the current period kasi yung 30% dyan, nung last month pa yan nagawa. So, dahil last month pa yung nagawa, kailangan po natin yung tanggalin sa computation kasi sabi natin sa FIPO, ang kinocompute lang po natin is EUP for the current period. So, hahatiin po natin yung 1,000. So, yung 30%, last period pa yan, so, 300 yun. Yung current, yung 70%, which is the remaining of the 100%, so, 700. So, ibig sabihin, pag FIPO method, ang isasama lang po natin, ito lang. Ito, ito. Then, isama po natin yung ending. Ang ending po natin ay 2,000. Multiply natin sa rate of completion na 50%. So, therefore, 1,000 yun. Diba? So, ito yan. So, 700, 3,000, then 1,000. So, lumalabas ang EUP natin kapag ang pinag-uusapan po natin ay FIPO method will be 4,700. So, lagay po natin sa taas, 4,700. So, under average method, actually, kung na-compute mo na yung FIPO method, madali na i-compute yung average method kasi i-add mo lang yung EUP beginning. Kasi ba diba, sabi natin sa computation ng unit cost ng average method, beginning inventory cost plus manufacturing cost over EUP beginning plus uh, EUP current. So, dahil nga na-compute na natin yung EUP current, which is 47, so i-add na lang po natin yung EUP beginning na 300. So, basically, ang computation natin dyan ay 47 plus 300. So, ang EOP po natin dito ay 5,000 units. So, another computation, kung medyo hindi ka sigurado dun sa una mong assumption, kung hindi mo siya masyado na graph yung concept, pwede mo rin namang gamitin yung alam na po nating data. Kasi sabi nga natin sa average method, we include all the EOP ng beginning tapos ng uh, current natin, di ba? So, lumalabas, meron tayo diyang transferred out and we also have the ending balance. So, dahil yung ini-include natin yung beginning EUP tsaka yung current, so basically, kapag yung uh, transferred out po natin is 100% pa din. Diba? So, yung transferred out natin is 4,000 times 100%. So, meron tayo diyang 4,000 units. Sa ending naman po, 50%. So, meron tayo diyang 2,000 so, lumalabas ito ay 1,000. So, technically, ang ating equivalent unit of production will be 5,000 units. So, since na-compute na po natin yung ating equivalent unit of production, nagay po natin sa taas. So, as you can see, magkaiba po ang ditang na-compute natin na EUP kasi doon sa FIPO method, we exclude the beginning inventory in EUP. Then, sa average method, ay sinasama po natin yung EUP na 300. So, yung difference po nila is equivalent doon sa ating beginning EUP na 300 units. Okay, so let's now proceed with the computation of unit cost under FIPO method and average method. So sa FIPO method, ang formula natin is manufacturing cost, current period, over the EUP current. Diba? So lagyan na lang natin C para hindi tayo malito. So yung manufacturing cost current natin is 258,500 so, i-divide lang po natin yan doon sa ating uh, EUP current which is nakumpita natin with uh, 4,700. So, 258,000 divided by 4,700. So, ang ating unit cost if we will be using FIPO method will be 55 pesos per unit. Under average method naman, so dahil pagsasamahin po natin yung beginning at yung current, so ilagay lang po natin. So, beginning inventory cost plus manufacturing cost. Then over beginning EUP plus current EUP. Diba? So yung beginning EUP natin, na-compute natin kanina 300. Yung current EUP natin 47. So lumalabas. So yung ating magiging EUP sa baba will be 5,000. And na-compute din natin yan na ibang paraan kung kanina. So yung 4,000 times 100%. Tapos yung 2,000 times 50%. Kaya natin nakuha yung 5,000. So, kung saan kayo nadadalian, okay lang po yun as long as same result yung lalabas na, um, na units. So, ang equivalent unit of production natin under average is 55, uh, 5,000 units. 
So, yung cost naman natin, dahil sinama natin yung beginning sa denominator, dapat lang naman isama rin natin siya sa numerator. So, lumalabas, meron tayo dito ang 15,000 plus 258,500. So, ang result niyan ay 15,000 plus 258,500. So, that will be 273,500 over 5,000. So, magiging AUP natin kapag ginamit po natin ay average method will be 54 pesos and 70 cents. So, ilagay na po natin dito sa taas. So, ito po ay magiging uh, 55. Ito naman po ay 54.7. Okay, so punta na tayo sa last part which is the computation of ending inventory balance and the transferred out balance. So, para hindi tayo mahirapan, so pwede na ulit tayo mag-prepare ng T-account, di ba? So, unahin muna natin si average method kasi available na po yung ating unit cost. So, under average method, so yung T-account po natin dahil ang pinag-uusapan na natin ay cost. So, meron tayo dyan beginning. Then, we also have the manufacturing cost. Then, yung total goods placed in process. So, i-forward lang natin yan dun sa right side. So, meron tayo dyan transferred out and we also have the ending balance. So, yung beginning balance natin, 15,000 yun. Then, yung manufacturing cost, 258,500. So, yung TGTP natin ay yung total nun ay 273,500. So, lagay lang na natin sa right side. So, dahil average method yan, parang merchandise lang yan, multiply lang natin dun sa number of units, ba So, yung transferred out units natin is 4,000. Then, yung ending inventory natin, equivalent unit of production is 1,000. So, 4,000 times 54.7. Dito naman, 1,000 times 54.7. So, ang lalabas po doon sa number, sa transferred out will be 218,800. Doon naman po sa ending inventory, we have 54,700. So, pag tinotal po natin yan, ang result po ay 273,500 which is equivalent dun sa ating total goods place and process. So, since alam na po natin, ilagay na lang. So, yung transferred out, 218,800 tapos yung ating ending inventory is 54,700. So, ganyan pa lang po ang pagdetermine ng ending inventory at transferred out. So, ibig sabihin, crucial talaga na madetermine natin yung unit cost bago tayo makapag-allocate sa transferred out tsaka yung ending inventory. So, proceed tayo sa FIFO method. Sa FIFO method, dinidisregard natin yung beginning inventory kasi automatic magiging part na yan ng ating transferred out. So, same lang din po yung uh, ating T-account na gagawin. So, meron tayong beginning na 15,000. Then, manufacturing cost, 258,500. Ang total, 273,500. Forward natin sa kabila, 273,500. Then, ang nawawala is yung transferred out at yung ending. So, yung transferred out, tatlo po yung ating magiging basis niyan, di ba? So, yung una po is yung uh, beginning inventory done during the month, which is 700 units yun, di ba? Tapos, yung started and completed, we have 3,000. I-multiply lang po natin yan dun sa unit ko sa nakompute natin na 55 times 55. So, lumalaba 700 times 55, so we have 38,500. Then, yung pangalawa, meron tayong 165. Tapos, i-add lang po natin yung beginning balance natin kasi automatic part na yan ng manufacturing ko. So, wala po tayong ita times. Ililista lang natin dyan yung 15,000. Then, uh, pag tinotal po natin yan, so, ayun na po yung value na i-reflect natin sa transferred out. So, 15,000 plus 38,500 plus 165. So, ang lalabas po doon ay 218,500. So, yung ending balance naman, which is yung EUP natin, so meron tayo dyang 1,000 units. Multiply lang natin doon sa nakompute natin na 55. So, lalabas po dyan ay 55,000. So, pag tinotal po natin yung 218,500 minus 55,000, ang result nyan will be the same, which is 273,500. So, kung gusto nyong hindi na kayo mahirapan, pwede namang unahin nyo na yung ending inventory. So, 1,000 times 55, 55,000. Then, i-less nyo na lang yung total goods placed in process na 273,500. 
So therefore, ang sagot po natin sa ending inventory will be 55,000. Then ang ating transferred out will be 218,500. So, ayan po ang difference ng FIFO method and average method with regards to uh, process costing during the second year or during the second month of operation. So, thank you for watching.